Welcome to In Focus, where we go one-on-one -on -one with the Republican field of presidential candidates. I'm Tara Wall, your host. He's an author and commentator who served as chairman of the National Governors Association during his term as the 44th governor of Arkansas. I sat down with Mike Huckabee to talk about why he wants your nomination for president and a few things you probably didn't know. For this segment of In Focus, today we've got former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee joining us. Thank you so much, Governor, for having us. Thank you very much. Great Longest to be with you. Longest serving governor of Arkansas, is that right? Uh, well, almost. The longest serving Republican by far, 10 and a half years, and uh, it was a good long stretch. Okay. Well, we're going to dig right in. Okay. Uh, we, Looking at your, uh, your campaign website, you said that you hope I never forget where I come from, mm -hmm. and the country as well. Uh, tell us how that applies to why you personally are running for governor, or excuse me, for president. I was going to say, you know, I, I've, I've kind of done that, right. ready to move on. Um, I grew up like a lot of people in America. I grew up in a dirt poor family that worked hard, barely could pay the rent on the little orange brick rent house on 2nd Street in Hope, Arkansas. Uh, I'm the first male in my entire family lineage to ever graduate high school, much less go to college. So for me, the American dream is not something I've read about or it's not abstract or it's not something that uh, I think is a wonderful idea, I wonder how it works. I've actually experienced it, I've lived it. And so I, I believe that our country's in serious trouble. We're in trouble economically, we're in trouble militarily, we're in trouble morally. And somebody needs to become president who understands that all of these three issues have to be integrated into a focus, that we have to get our economy back where people are working rather than receiving something from the government in the form of a, of a relief check. People want to work, but they got to have jobs and jobs that pay them enough to be able to feed their families. Uh, we, we've got to change the direction at which we are securing this country. It's not just border security. That's a part of it. But uh, just under Obama alone, we've had a 25% cut in military expenditures. We're spending uh, an incredibly low percentage of our GDP on the military. We were spending 6% under Reagan. We're spending 2% under uh, President Obama, the lowest level of military readiness since before World War II. So we can't defeat all the enemies that we face around the world. We can't even fend them off if they know that we're weakened to the point that they can take advantage of our weakness. But it's not enough, even if we do those two things, I have con been convinced a long time, we also have to have moral clarity. There has to be a basis for our civilization. And when I say moral clarity, some things are right, some things are wrong. We need to be unafraid. And s specifically, as Republicans, we need to be unafraid to say, it's just wrong to dismember unborn human babies and sell their parts. This shouldn't be something we wrestle over. It's not controversial. We ought to take a clear, definitive stand because we should say it is fundamentally wrong to treat people uh, and their body parts as if they were parts to a used Buick. We, so you certainly outlined a number of issues, um, issues also that are pre prevalent on your website. You go through a number of them, whether it's jobs or education. Uh, you mentioned border security, national security, the debt, energy, tax reform. Uh, but what would you say among all of those issues is the biggest concern facing our country right now? Uh, sometimes people want to say, is there one thing? And to me, it's like saying, which wing on the airplane is most important? The one on the left or the one on the right? I think both of them need to be there. So it's. Uh, jobs in the economy, it's national security. Those are the wings. And then it's driven by the, uh, the flaps, the ailerons, and the rudder. That's the moral clarity. So a president has to be able to focus on all those things and not just say, I'm going to do this one thing. He can't do one thing and leave others behind. He has to focus on getting America uh, back to its point of strength. Strength economically, strength militarily, strength morally, all those things have to be a part of the agenda of the next president. You gave a little glimpse of your background in Hope, growing up in Hope, Arkansas. Uh -huh. uh, how or why did you become a Republican? Some people may not know yeah. this about you, Repu uh, voters may not know this about you, so tell us how and why. Well, there were no Republicans in my home county. When I say no, by the, by the time I was, uh, I guess, maybe a teenager, there were seven Republicans that I think I could identify in the entire county, none of whom, by the way, were native of Hope. Arkansas was a hardcore, full-blown Democrat state, and my county, where I grew up, was absolutely Democrat. 
But I worked for uh, a gentleman at the local radio station from the time I was 14, my first real job. And I had uh, oh, I'd campaigned for a couple of Republican candidates uh, because I liked them and rode my bicycle around town with balloons on them and stuff. But at age 14, uh, I went to work for a gentleman named Haskell Jones, who was one of those seven Republicans. He had a huge influence on me. And I became clear that I was a Republican because I believed in the individual. Uh, I did not believe that my life was tied to whatever my group could do. And I valued the notion that the limits that I had as an American were limits placed only by me. That if I was willing to get a good education, work hard, treat people right, there were no limits to what could be achieved. And the individual meritocracy that is the focus of the Republican Party was a big reason. Um, I also believed in sort of classic law and order. Uh, I realized, and this was during the 60s, there were some tumultuous times going on in our country. And it became very clear that I identified uh, with the Republican Party, and so I did something that very few people my age were doing, it's becoming Republican, and virtually no one in my hometown and county were doing, and that's becoming a Republican. So from teenage years forward. And you've got, obviously, a dearth of experience, politic, uh, especially uh, in public life. Who would you say over, over time, um, in your professional life in particular, uh, probably influenced you the most? Well, I've had a number of people who did. The gentleman I was uh, mentioning before, Haskell Jones, the manager of the radio station, huge influence in my life. Uh, my debate coach in high school was a, a big influence on me. As I became an adult, and especially as I got into politics, uh, Margaret Thatcher was a major influence. Uh, her clarity, her sense of, of moral perspective. She understood what she believed. Uh, Ronald Reagan, and I know every Republican's going to say that, but I mean, it really was. I was a part of a movement back in 1979 that led into a lot of evangelical Christians getting involved. And there was a, a major seminal event in Dallas, Texas, the National Affairs Briefing at which Reagan spoke. That was a turning point for involving Christians. And I was helping to organize that way back in 1980. He really impressed me as somebody, and I'll never forget what he said at that meeting. He said, I know that uh, you can't endorse me, but I endorse you. And it was uh, a pretty magic moment as he affirmed uh, people of faith getting involved in the political arena, which a lot of folks don't understand. That was pretty uh, new territory back in 1980. Uh, later, other influences would certainly be, um, I think, Pope John Paul II, and I'm a Baptist, I'm not even Catholic. But I think the leadership that he showed, both in Poland and then after he became Pope, uh, the uncompromising convictions that he held to were really instrumental, not just for the Catholic Church, but for the whole world. Wow. Well, you know, a lot of folks know you, uh, at least uh, may maybe not necessarily if they don't know you from Arkansas, they certainly know your face uh, nationally across uh, uh, the network screens. But tell, tell me something people probably don't know about Mike Huckabee. Well, they may not know um, that I like to hunt and fish, that I don't play golf. They may not know that I have probably over 3,000 songs on my uh, iPhone in my iTunes account, and the music ranges from classical uh, to punk. I mean, it, it's probably not the uh, collection that people would look at and say, yeah, that's, that's Huckabee's, I'm pretty sure that's his, because I, I really do have uh, interest in all sorts of musical genres, and just depends on what mood I'm in. Well, I certainly would have not known that about you. Probably not. And that's no. probably a, a good point to end on. I think we've covered it all, Governor Huckabee, and I just want to, once again, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this edition of In Focus. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. I'm Tara Wall. Thank you for watching In Focus. You can check out the series at GOP.com.